Borderlands has a unique loot system, and it's one that's been in tons of RPGs across the years, but Borderlands does it a little bit differently and, and implements it into an FPS-style game, which is definitely something that's unique. And it's an amazing loot system. We can all agree on that, but I think we can make it a little bit better. So today, let's talk about Borderlands 3, and let's talk about the rarity system. So, beginning off, just like in the other Borderlands games, we're going to have a rarity system that's, you know, white, green, blue, purple, on, on and so forth. But, I'd like to add some stuff in there and change it around a little bit to, really, the main goal uh, to increase end game content. So, we're going to white, green, blue, purple, pink... Um, light orange, orange, dark orange, red, and teal, which teal is pearlescent. Um, so, explaining each of these these new colors. Um, so, of course, I've left out E Tech and uh, Seraph. Now, the reason I've done that is because um, I don't really believe that we might not see an E Tech type gun. If we do, then sure, we can change up colors, whatever. But basically, I've added in this pink um, past, you know, one up above purple. Now, what I'm going to say about this is that the pink weapons are boss-specific weapons. So, these are the equivalent of the unique weapons in Borderlands 2. The, you know, the blue weapons with the red flavor text and stuff like that. So, these pink weapons would drop from bosses or quests and have specific characteristics, and I'll talk about that later. Next, we move on to the three tiers of orange weapons. So, we have light orange, which are super rares. Um... And they would be kind of low tier legendaries in a way. Um, and then we can go into, uh, of course, I'll talk, I'll go over all of this later, but then we can talk about um, oranges, which are the middle tier, and dark oranges, which are better. Um, next, we have red, which are forbidden or exotic weapons. Now, when I say exotic, don't immediately jump to destiny, but um, basically just better than legendary, worse than pearls. Something like that. The last one we have is pearlescent. Is teal. Um, we all know what that is, the highest rarity is supposed to be the best weapon in the game. So, um, basically for reference on these drops, um, I think the Borderlands 1 drop rates were pretty crazy. They were good. Uh, when you killed Kra, you got all sorts of legendaries. But they weren't very good legendaries. So, let's. this is, this is basically why I've implemented this three-tier system in the, in the orange area, is that we could have bosses drop different types of legendaries. So it feels like we're getting loot, but we're, you know, still some of it's subpar, some of it's better, stuff like that. And I think that the Borderlands drop rates, the Borderlands 1 drop rates, like I said, were pretty on par, but they were a bit much for in terms of, you know, loot. But I liked getting all of that stuff, even though it meant I had to sort through all of it to find anything good. I liked getting that shower of loot. And I think that's something that Borderlands 3 needs. Um, and for reference, the, the reds would be more rare than um, than legendaries in like Borderlands 2, for instance. And the, the pearls would be um, very, very rare. And they would be probably as rare, if not rarer, than Borderlands 1 legendaries. Um, and I'll, I'll speak, speak on this. Is I've put... 400 hours in Borderlands 1, because I started playing Borderlands 2 first, so I have way more hours in Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel and stuff like that, but I did, I played tons of Borderlands 1 because I think it's a great game, um, and I haven't yet gotten a Pearl. Um, I've killed Craw probably, you know, hundreds of times, I've farmed the, the General Nox, I have tons of legendaries, never gotten a Pearl though, so they are pretty rare. Um, and so, uh, basically, I feel that Pearl's I feel that Pearl Essence should be better than pretty much everything in the game, and that's why they're the most rare. Uh, they should be god-tier guns. <laughs> and I would like to address that Pearl Essence in past games, um, looking at Borderlands 2, they haven't been the greatest, and so this is something I like to correct. I feel that um, we should make the guns great before we add the weird gimmicks. And you know, I'm looking at guns like the Wonderlust, the courses I'm talking about before the unofficial community patch, the guns like the Wonderlust and um, the Bearcat, they're just not good. They have these crazy gimmicks, but they're just not good guns. And I think that's something we should correct. These pearls are something we need to go after. And I would like to, to speak on Destiny a little bit. Um, of course, they don't really have a pearlescent, but 
when we think about some of the exotics in Destiny, i.e. the Galahorn, if you play Destiny, you know what I'm talking about, um, when you get that gun, it's like, you know, mad, because everyone knows, like, it's it's an amazing gun, like, it's one of the best endgame rocket launchers in the game, and it's something that, you know, helps with endgame content, and that's what I want, um, pearls to feel like. When I got my first Galahorn drop, it was incredible, and I was, like, freaking out, and that's what I really want from Borderlands, in terms of pearlescence, or even just reds, really, but something that's sought after. So, I would like to note that uh, before I talk about all the, the different breakdowns of, of differences between the, the um, rarities, uh, they increase steadily in damage as things go up, just like they have in previous games. I think we should keep that. Um, but I think we should add characteristics. Um, and so, starting off with white. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I already believe this is true in Borderlands 2, um, that white weapons are basic, no elements, no specialties, no anything crazy, except for Malawan, of course, which needs to have an element. Um, so we keep them pretty bare bones like that. Next up is green, and we basically have more damage, more stats, better stuff, whatever, and we add the elemental spawn chance. Same thing, this is just how Borderlands 2 is, like we should keep that. Um, next is blue. And I believe we should increase all stats from the green, but then we should add an extra chance to get uh, non-damage stat bonuses. This includes mag size, elemental chance, reload speed, etc., etc. Um, next is purple, which takes all of the things from the previous rarities and adds another one. So we we get that that added bonus non-damage stat from the blues. And then we also get an added damage bonus stat. This includes things like crit, fire rate, elemental damage, things that increase damage. So going up, it's like a, a, a scaling model. Each one gets the, the abilities of the predecessor. So, you know, uh, blue has the elemental spawn chance that green had, and it also gets this. You know, purple gets the, the, the added non-damage non stat bonuses. Also, it gets added stat bonuses for damage. Um, okay, so, pink weapons. Um, pink weapons are going to be unique, like I said before. They are going to be dropped from mini-bosses, named bosses, unique enemies, things like that. They're going to be good and dependable. They're going to be usable, they're going to help through playthroughs and stuff like that. I don't know if necessarily they'll be endgame, but they will be better than purple. Um, and they have an interesting quirk that could decrease the usability so this is where I want to talk about guns like the Wonderlust. Something that's just, it's just funny because let's say we have like a really crazy boss, you can't hit any targets, so he's using a Wonderlust. Like, the things that are, are unique to the enemy it's killed from. So when we talk about uh, Borderlands 2 bosses, Scorch drops the Hellfire. That makes perfect sense. The fire boss drops a uh, high elemental damage fire weapon. Um, and we talk about uh, the pot of gold from Lucky. He's a uh, an Irish bagman or whatever. Uh, uh, he keeps his money and he drops money when he gets shot. That's hilarious. It's a unique gun to him. But I think instead of having these to be blue or legendary, we should make one rarity for them. Um, which this also leads me to another topic is that uh, bosses should pretty much always drop a, a gun for them. Looking at Borderlands 2, we have bosses like Badma, who are a named boss with a cutscene, they're part of the story, kind of, but they don't really have a designated drop. I think that's something that we should fix in Borderlands 2. Named bosses, cutscene bosses, mini bosses, having their own drops, I think would be awesome. And adding a, a rarity to accommodate that would be really cool as well. So, next we're going to talk about the three tiers of oranges. Light orange are going to be dependable. They're going to be better than purple, and... They should feel better than purple. They could be unique as well. They have, you know, unique characteristics like pinks and stuff like that. But they are um, not overbearing. Um, I'm looking at guns like the Logan's gun, which is pretty much unusable except for to regen ammo. Um, I'm looking at guns like, again, like the Wonderlust or the Bearcat, which have these unique abilities that pretty much nerf the gun. Um, I don't want that to be the case with oranges or reds or pearlescents. I believe we should leave all those things in pink. So light orange weapons are going to be better. They're going to be like the, lot, the mass majority of Borderlands 1 oranges. They're there, they're present, they're usable, but they're not incredible. 
So they have special perks, red text, cool names, but don't generally outplay the le- the, le- the 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 rarities above them. So they're not they don't outclass reds or dark oranges or even regular oranges for that matter. Of course, that's kind of self-explanatory. So the next one is orange. This has the added bonus of better stats, pretty much. It's just better than the the, the previous oranges. Now, one thing I would like to talk about is this the specifics of having different guns in different categories. So, I haven't quite made my mind up on whether I'd like to have different types, there are different um, shades of orange, like in Borderlands 1, for each type of legendary. So, you know, I don't necessarily want a dark orange uncomparable, and a regular orange uncomparable, and a light orange uncomparable. I don't want that to, to, I don't necessarily want that to exist, but it wouldn't be bad. I think we can find a happy mix between having some that are carried across all three tiers, and then there's some oranges that are only in tier one, or only in tier two, or only in tier three. So, um, then moving on to talk about dark orange, is there going to be better stats, and they're also going to have a special ability. Um, this thing I really want to, to um, think about, like Loonshine in this, in this instance. So, you know, just small attributes that add to the gun, bonus fire rate, cool stuff like that, uh, little Loonshine effects. And, of course, they need to be mentioned on the stat card, just like Loonshine are. Now, I don't necessarily want them to give it a special skin. I thought the Loonshine skins kind of were ugly, but... Um, you know, point being is they added a, a special benefit to the guns. Now, this would make extra sense in terms of carrying um, legendaries across all three tiers. Because let's say you have a light orange, uh, Uncamped Herald. It's okay, it's not great. You have the regular orange one, which is pretty good, and then you have the dark orange one, which has like, you know, bonus damage or a chance to ignore shield or some cool stuff like that. That's something to farm for. So, you know, if I have a regular orange Uncamped Herald, I want to farm for a dark orange Uncamped Herald. So that is one added benefit of carrying them across. But I think, we, like I said, I think we can find a, um, a happy mix. The next rarity is, is red. And much like oranges, these guns are going to be dependable. But they're going to be better. I want them to be better than oranges. They have special quirks and red text, cool names. But they also are going to have a special characteristic, not like Loonshine, but more like built into the gun. Um, these characteristics will be like double element, ammo regeneration, player boost, just cool little special ideas that come with guns. And we've seen tons of these types of guns uh, before. I'll get into some examples later. I want these. I want red guns specifically to help players in end game content. You should be using red guns to find pearls. You should be using oranges to find reds. You know, you build your way up, and that's really what's going to, to work through endgame content. So the next one is Pearlescent, or Teal. And these weapons, I really want to be devastating. I want them to have these really crazy good stats. I want them to have really awesome perks and stuff like that. So I'm talking insane fire rate magazine size, reload speed, really high critical damage, infinite ammo, stuff, you know, really cool things like that. Um... I know when I say infinite ammo, I don't mean for every pearl. That would be a little bit ridiculous, but I'm talking the characteristic of the infinity pistol would be really good for a pearl because it's a really, really powerful characteristic. So, um, I these the, the pearls, I think, should be on another level. They're something that every player strives after getting, and once you get, you're really happy with it, and you use it all the time because it's a really good gun. So, next I'm going to give some examples of each of the, the rarities of endgame, anyway. So, when we're talking about light orange, I want to talk about guns like the Gub. You know, Dependable, not great. The Savior, Dependable, not great. This is from Borderlands 1. And the Thanatos from Borderlands 1. Um, now, of course, keep in mind, I'm talking about these guns at level 72, OP0, and level 69 for um, Borderlands 1. So, the Gub. Um, great gun. It kills enemies, but it's not amazing. The Savior, it's a pretty solid SMG. It's, it's better than a purple SMG. The Thanantos, although I don't like the Than- Thanantos that uh, much, it's still pretty good. Now, talking about regular orange, we have guns like the Layuda, which is, is actually a really good sniper. This I was kind of on the fence about adding that one in the regular orange category. Um, we have things like the Striker, a great shotgun, you know, does a lot of damage. We have things like the Bitch, really powerful SMG. Really, I'm talking about the Bitch in both uh, in Borderlands 2. The Borderlands 1 bitch was, it was good, it was dependable. And really, 
I guess the bitch in Borderlands 1 would also make sense in this category, but it's a good gun. You know, it kills people, stuff like that. The dark orange weapons would be things that are above average or above normal. So we're talking about the guns like the Master Unforgiven from Borderlands 1. And if you've used an Unforgiven with the Master Prefix and you hit those crazy headshots, you know what I'm talking about. That was one of my favorite guns in Borderlands 1 because it just did so much critical damage. It was crazy. Um, guns like this, I would also talk about like the, the Hornet, which um, in Borderlands 2, of course, the, the Hornet, Hornet in Borderlands 1 wasn't as good, but the Hornet in Borderlands 2 does an insane amount of caustic damage, and I think it's really cool that we have a really good gun, and I think that would make sense in a dark orange category, um, especially if it was the twin Hornet, which um, puts out more damage. So next we're going to talk about Red, which is going to be like the Uncompared from Borderlands 2, and I, I was I was I was weary putting the the uncamp herald in in this in this video at all, but I think that the uncamp herald is a really good gun. But I don't know if it's good enough to be pearl, um, but it's definitely better than orange. You know, it, it's a really good gun. And so then we're going to talk about guns like the Hellfire from Borderlands One. The the Borderlands One Hellfire is a really really great gun. It melts through enemies. It burns people like crazy. And I think that would be better than legendary. Not as good as Pearl. Next, we're going to talk about the Equalizer. And not that the Equalizer was an overly, really powerful gun, but I want to talk about the Equalizer's characteristics. So we have an ammo regen type gun um, for the red category. And it's something that um, would be really powerful and not quite Pearl because, you know, it regens ammo. It doesn't have infinite ammo. That's, so that's like the dividing line. You know, you have like regen ammo is red and you have like infinite ammo is, is Pearl. So it's a characteristic that I think should be included on, on red guns. And of course I couldn't mention like a double element, um, but I couldn't think of any specifically double element guns that are really, really powerful. And I really, you know, want to get that idea. But anyway, moving on. Pearl. The Norfleet is a great example of what I feel a pearl should be. That thing's freaking amazing, you know? It melts through enemies. It blows up rooms. It's crazy good. And I think it should be something you really sought after and something that, you know, once you get it, it's crazy cool going through mobbing areas with Nor Norfleets. And in a way, I don't want pearls to be, you know, the end-all gun, but at the same time, I kind of want them, they, them to be the end-all gun. Because we're looking at guns in Borderlands 2 currently, right? We have guns like, you know, the Northly that are legendary, and they're pretty much end-all. But they're legendary, so where's the room for the pearls? Um, so I think those should be moved to the legendary. And, and things like um, the Infinity Pistol, um, not necessarily because it's so good. Because the Infinity Pistol is a good a good weapon, but it's severely nerfed unless you get the, the perfect prefix for the 10.4 fire rate or whatever, but... The infinity, the characteristics of the infinity are having infinite ammo, crazy fire rate, crazy damage, um, would be really good in, in terms of, you know, if it got buffed for, to be a pearl. Other guns for pearls would be like the B. It's a really, really powerful shield. It's something that can add crazy damage to endgame, stuff like that. And, of course, I have to mention the God Roll Double Anarchy, something that I feel is one of the best games, guns in the Borderlands series. It you know, which is a raid boss killer in Borderlands 1, and I think it should, something something like that should make an, a comeback, but as a pearl, you know, when we talk about these really, really crazy god roll weapons, is something that I want to be pearl, so we can also add in guns like the Ajax Ogre, and, you know, really crazy combination weapons, uh, you know, of course they were called hybrid weapons back in Borderlands 1, but, um, things that can't, you know, are just over the top powerful, and that's what I want pearls to be. Obviously, take all of these examples I've given with a grain of sand. The scaling isn't quite perfect for you know between games and stuff like that. But just I want you to to imagine um, the kind of level that these guns are on. So, talking about um, having like what would be the rarity? Because you know I admit. If you give these guns away too much, if, they, if every player has a pearl, they're really powerful and no one will use other guns. But at the same time, you don't want to make them too rare that no one wants to go and try to get them and stuff like that. So I think we could find a happy balance of rarity, but I feel that having uh, higher rarities and more rarities in the end game content would add significant uh, playtime, longevity, stuff like that. So 
anyway, uh, that was my take on the what I believe the Borderlands 3 loot, loot system should look like. Um, some changes, some things kept the same, stuff like that. So, anyway, I've been Joe Romo. This is Borderlands 3. Let's talk. The rarity system. I'll see you guys next time.